This video introduces processes. A process is a running instance of a launched executable program. Processes are created by other processes. An existing parent process duplicates its own address space through a, something known as a fork to create a new child process structure. And any process can create a child process. In your book, there's a graphic that shows what we call the process life cycle. So a process will execute a fork, which basically clones itself off. And through this fork routine, the child process inherits security identities, previous and current file descriptors, port and resource privileges that the parent had, environment variables, and the parent's program code. A child process can then exec their own program code and replace the parent code. Normally, a parent process will go to sleep while the child process runs, and it will ask for a wake-up call by requesting a wait to be signaled when the child finishes and exits. Upon exit, the child process has already closed or discarded the majority of its resources and the environment. What remains is referred to as a zombie. The parent is signaled that the child has exited and the parent performs a cleanup technique called a reap to clean up the zombie. And then the parent process, now being back to being a normal process again, goes back to work executing its own code. Again, this is known as the process life cycle. The next page in your book, there's a diagram that shows all the states of a Linux process. Starting in the center of the diagram on the left, we've just learned that a process is created through a fork routine. And then when it's ready and it's set up everything it needs, it goes into a runnable state. There may be other things already running on the CPU. So it's runnable until the CPU is freed up to actually put the process into a running state on the CPU. Processes have to share the CPU with other processes. They may be preempted or rescheduled in order to give everyone time, but they switch between the runnable and the running state constantly as there is work to do. Notice that there are two examples of running. There's running user and running kernel, depending on whether you're running your own process code or running a system call or some other kernel code on, on the process's behalf. When a process is waiting for I.O., waiting for disk activity to come back, waiting for network, waiting for user input, it may go into a wait state. And there are basically three types of wait state. Um, stand, you know, S, D, and K are interruptible, uninterruptible. Those are technical terms that you can learn more about. But they're basically not running. They're waiting for some other event or signal or data to come in. Once that event occurs or the signal occurs to tell them to get back to work, they go back into a runnable state where they can be scheduled to be running on a CPU. As you'll see later, you also have keystrokes to, to allow you to suspend a process. Notice this stop state. You can suspend it and resume it to go back into a runnable state. So those are the process states of a typical Linux, Linux process. In your book, you can see the table that gives a little bit more technical detail about the definition of each of those actual state flags. With processes, the commands that we use to see them are mostly PS. So we'll start off with that. Uh, the PS command has a number of supported keystroke modes or types. And the man page tells you that we, we support the three different types of options. The Unix options, if you've worked with any other Unixes, you may be used to certain character options. The BSD options, which do not use a dash while the Unix options do. And then what they call the GNU, the GNU long options, which you'll see here are preceded by two dashes. And as you look through the man page, you'll see many examples of, uh, you can use any at any time, BSD versions, Unix versions, or long versions. 
you know, this deselect would be an example of the GNU style long version, which is becoming popular with options. So let's try a couple. One of the most common is PS-AUX. A will give you all processes, not just yours, but everything on the system. The U meaning give me a, a user interesting context of what you list. So that's going to show everything on the system. And at the top of the list in brackets is, is what are known as kernel threads. So I'm just going to hit my spacebar to get down to uh, the normal processes that I want to look at. Notice the process ID, look at those columns, the CPU percentage, the memory percentage that it's using, these, these processes seem to be quiet. The amount of memory that they use as the amount of swap in memory in VSZ and the actual working memory, which is known as resident set size. The other important column here, or two columns, are TTY, which shows the terminal that the process is running on, and these being background processes aren't really running on a terminal. And then also the status. Notice that everything we see here seems to be waiting for some activity. They're not doing anything actively. They're sleeping. So let's scroll down to some more interesting processes besides. Here we go. So th most of these are all sleeping also. But here it looks like these have some activity, some CPU time or memory time. We see the process ID on the left side and whoever ran it, whoever started it on the far left. A PS-LAX is also a popular, it gives a longer listing, they call it. And this includes, notice the, the priority column and the nicing column. And otherwise it seems pretty much the same as the AUX, but a slightly different output. If you're used to the Unix syntax, if you've come from a Unix environment, you might recognize PS-EF. Again, we're listing the same processes. We're just listing it in a different format. This is the older style BSD format. Let me scroll down to where there's some interesting processes. So just a different layout, but the same type of information to look at processes, see how much resources they're using, find out what the process ID, find who ran them, and find the syntax of the way the command was kicked off. At any time as a non-root user, when you do PS without you know, the F or without the E for everything or the A for all, you end up getting only your processes in your window. In this case, I did a full listing, but I didn't want everything. And it just gives me things that are running in context of this window. So those are the basics of working with processes. This concludes the introduction to processes.